In this video, we're going to be looking at a topic that I just kind of forgot to include in my AP Pre-Calculus course, arithmetic and geometric sequences. But I guess if I'm being honest, I mean, that was kind of an intentional choice. It didn't really fit in well with anything, and I just decided that I'm pretty sure y'all would just know what to do if you encountered this problem, even without me showing you this video. Okay, but um, what you need to know is that a sequence is like, it's just like a regular function, it's like it takes in whole numbers instead of just like all real numbers. Um, and so it's... You know, an example is just like a list of numbers. So a couple of examples of this would be like 2, 7, 12, 17, 22, 27, 32, and so on. You know, a list of numbers where you can see the pattern. Or 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, and so on. You hopefully can see that pattern too. Um, these are two sequences of, of numbers. And the two types that we need to know are going to be arithmetic and geometric. And, you know, some people call it arithmetic, but I look at that word. I've only ever seen that word pronounced arithmetic in my life. Um, and it would make a lot of sense to call it an arithmetic sequence, so that's what I always call it. Um, the first one that we want is that arithmetic sequence, and it has a common difference between terms. And they hopefully reminded us that that means a constant rate of change. So really what this means is that an arithmetic sequence forms a linear pattern. Okay, so thinking about these two sequences written off to the right in black, it's going to be the one on top that's going to be an arithmetic sequence because each time the term increases by 5. Okay, so I'm going to say, all right, this one's the arithmetic sequence. The common difference, that's like the most important thing of, of the arithmetic sequence, uh, that's going to be 5 because each time uh, the next term is 5 more than the previous term. And down here, they give us a kind of a formula um, for the general term of, of this sequence. And so I'll just use that. A n equals 2 plus 5 n. But I'm going to point out that, you know, without any other context, it's important to, to note that, like, we're assuming that that first term, that 2 up there, that's what the arrow's pointing at, that's the zeroth term that corresponds to n equals zero. And that's all right, unless, you know, we have contradictory information that says that we need to start, that's the, that two is the n equals one term. Okay. And then we also want to think about a geometric sequence. And um, the thing about a geometric sequence is that there's a common ratio or a constant proportional change. We've seen this in, in this class. This is an exponential pattern. Okay, and so yes, like each time uh, the next term is doubled the previous term. So yeah, this 3, 6, 12, 24, that's going to be a geometric sequence. Okay, and because it doubled each time, the common ratio is going to be 2. Okay, and then they gave us another helpful formula. Gn equals g0 times r to the n, where g0 is the zeroth term and r is that common ratio. Um, but we also have gn equals gk times r to the n minus k, where gk is the kth term of the sequence. So I think it might be a good idea. Okay, what if we knew that that 3 there had to be the first term, not the zeroth term? Okay, well, if 3 was the n equals 1 term, we might need to write it as gn equals 3 times 2 to the n minus 1, because 3 was the n equals 1 term. That makes a lot of sense, right? When we plug in 1, we need to be taking 3 times 2 to the 0, which is going to give me 3, and then with n equals 2 term, the second term, 6. If I plug in n equals 2, I'm going to multiply 3 times 2, and I'm going to get 6. And so that's kind of like the big picture overview of what we need to be able to do with sequences in AP Pre-Calculus. And here's an example from the course description. Um, and this is really honestly why I figured that this question right here, I looked at it and I was like, man, I don't really see when I'm going to do this in class. And I think they're just going to get it right based on maybe stuff they knew from Algebra 2. Um, but when you look at this and we see, all right, n equals 1 needs to give us g n equals 8. So g1 equals 8 and g2 equals 4. I got to think with those two points, we should be able to eliminate. All right, so 4 times 1 half to the n minus 2. Well, let's just plug in. It's going to be, it does seem to work. It works for 1 and 2 because 1 half to the negative 1 is 2. That's just like an interesting way of putting it. Let's see what's wrong with the other ones. 8 times 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, if we plug in n equals 1, we do get 8, but if we plug in n equals 2, we get 16. Okay, so that one's out. Um, 8 times 1 half to the n, 
Okay, that doesn't even fit in n equals 1. When n equals 1, I need to get 8, and that would give me 4. Okay, 16 times 1 half to the n minus 1. Again, I plug in 1, I'm not going to get 8. So, okay, then that's really not that hard of a question, and I don't think you needed to watch this video to be able to get that question right. Now I'm going to work a couple more examples that are based off of questions I have seen in AP Classroom, but that are not the type of questions I can show you. Okay, um, and so, you know, of course, it'll write this stuff as a sentence. I just wanted to, you know, get it written down as quickly as possible. Be like, suppose a n is an arithmetic sequence uh, with first term 12 and common difference 7. What's the value of the ninth term? What's the value of a sub 9? Okay, so what we're going to need to do is write down a formula. Okay, remember it's a n, the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, is going to equal a0 plus d n, or a1 plus d times n minus 1. Okay, if we, if we start off with the first term. Or we could do a k plus d times n minus k, but that, that, I think that's needlessly complicated. Um, Otherwise, we're just going to know it's a linear pattern. We got two points. We or we got a point and a slope. We should be able to figure it out somehow. Um, this does look suspiciously like point slope form. Um, but anyway, okay, I think that's going to be a valid one. Let's just plug in n equals one. Yes, and then n equals two. I should add seven to twelve. Yeah, this makes sense. Okay, so a nine. I'm going to plug in nine for n because it's just a function. 7 times 9 minus 1 is 8, so 56 and 12 is equal to 68. 56, 12, 68, yeah. And here's a very similar question, but with a geometric sequence. Uh, suppose gn is a geometric sequence with all positive terms. If g5 is equal to 3 and g7 is equal to 2, if the fifth term is 3 and the seventh term is 12, what's the value of the tenth term? Okay, and you know, I think this one, you could probably just hack through it and just figure out what the ratio is and then just go up, up, up. Um, and that might actually be the thing to do. Um, but I'm gonna go and, you know, maybe I'll show you how to do that after. Uh, but what I'm just gonna do is probably the appropriate or the most officially approved way, which is going to be writing a formula. So it's going to be GK3 times that common ratio, which I don't know what that is yet, to the N minus five because I had the fifth term. If I'm using like the formulas that they showed us in the course description that I showed you, you know, like on the previous slides. Um, I've got this, I need to figure out what the ratio is though. So if I go from term five, there's a term six, uh, but they only told me about term seven. So if I'm going from three to something to 12 and I'm multiplying by the same number both times, and I've in total multiplied by 4, it's probably going to need to be 3 to 6 to 12. Okay, so that ratio is going to equal 2. And, you know, I think at this point you could just multiply by 2 three more times, or, um, you know, that's probably what y'all would do. Um, what I think I'm supposed to show you to do is to plug in 10 for n, 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 to the 10 minus 5 which is going to be 3 times 32, which will be 96. All right, now the last example I've got for you, this is a good one. So we've got two different sequences, W and X. WN is an arithmetic sequence and XN is a geometric sequence, and they're both positive for all N. And they're equal at the first term and the fifth term. And I'm going to ask you, which has got to be greater, W3 or X3? And this goes all the way back to the original definitions of arithmetic and geometric. An arithmetic sequence forms a linear pattern, and a geometric sequence forms an exponential pattern. So if I was to draw a graph of this situation, now I'm going to actually draw curves, because that's what we're most familiar with in this class. But then I'll take it back to the idea of a sequence. I'm going to draw a linear function and an exponential function that are intersecting twice, right? I have w1 equals x1 and w5 equals x5. That's my best attempt at drawing an exponential curve that intersects that thing twice. Uh, but we see they're equal in two places, and so I'm going to label that as 1 and 5. And then I'm going to notice, okay, well, the linear pattern, that's the arithmetic sequence, that's going to be those points right there, and the geometric sequence is going to be on the exponential curve, 
And I can see W3 should be halfway between W1 and W5. The points on the linear curve are higher. And so that means that W3 has to be greater than X3. Now I do know based on the fact that uh, Wn is greater than zero for all n, that these must both be increasing. Um, and I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, that's going to be all the examples for this video. This is really a kind of a fringe topic that I think you probably don't even need to study a whole lot, but I just want to make sure I have a comprehensive set of videos for all the AP pre-calculus topics. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.